Psalms 119. And tonight we're going to be uh, in verses 81 down to verse 88. Which is the Hebrew uh, letter uh, Kaf. It's funny how one letter in Hebrew is a word. see how there's so much more depth uh, in the scriptures than is just there on the surface. Mm -hmm. That when you get out of Strong's Dictionary and you start looking at the words and the meanings and everything uh, in your studies and how deep those studies can go. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, Psalms 119, uh, starting at verse 81, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's word. Starting in verse 81, it says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep thy testimony of thy mouth. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for the service we've had thus far, the music that's been sung. Lord, we just pray that you would just bless us uh, as we uh, go into your word tonight. Lord, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that we might truly receive out of your word the things that we need in our lives. Lord, to apply in our lives. Lord, that we might grow in faith. Lord, uh, living for you each day, doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we just pray that you'd forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Starting in verse 81, he says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. You know, uh, it's easy to get tired of this life, isn't it? <laughs> it isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. the, the persecutions or the tribulations that we go through, the afflictions that we have to endure, uh, can make us to the point where uh, we just uh, get tired of this life and our soul fainteth. Uh, for the salvation that is promised by God, that when He comes, amen, when He comes again, we're going to be changed. And we're not going to have to worry about the things in this world anymore, amen? We're not going to have to worry about uh, getting old. We're not going to have to worry about pains and, and back surgeries and knee surgeries and, and heart problems and all the things that we have to deal with here on this earth right now. It's all going to be changed one day, amen? When we uh, are changed and, and, and to be with the Lord forever and ever, guess what? What a re day, day of rejoicing that will be. Yes. Amen. Uh, that will be a day <coughs> in which uh, we have been longing for uh, and pine, our souls have been longing for and pining for for uh, a long time. Amen. And not just us, but those who have gone on before us. Who, who are, uh, you know, we're not going to prevent them. In other words, we're not going to go before them, but the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Amen? Yes. And so uh, we're all going to be uh, uh, made new. And what a, a re uh, great reunion day that's going to be. Uh, my mom and dad used to sing that song, uh, the reunion day, and what truth that is. Amen. We're going to be reunited with all those who have gone on before us. And we will be able to sing and to, uh, uh, to praise the Lord before his, uh, at His feet. Amen. So we hope in the Word of God. Uh, when our soul fainteth for the salvation of God, uh, that strengthens our hope in what we know has been promised to us by God. The 
salvation that has been promised, we hope in His Word because we know that, you know what, I can endure whatever comes to me in this life because God has a plan for me. And not only that, but I know one day it's all going to be worth it all. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everything that I've had to endure here in this life, every problem, every uh, uh, challenge, every trial of my faith uh, it is more precious to me because I know one day it's all going to uh, to be worth it. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 4, he says, For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Amen? Yeah. We groan. We are burdened with this tabernacle, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And in verse 9 he says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. You see, we have this hope, amen? We have this hope that God has given to us, and He has sealed us with His Holy Spirit. He has sealed us with His Spirit of promise that He is not going to leave us nor forsake us. Amen? And that we have that promise that even though we have to go through hardships, that one day He's going to wipe away all tears. Amen? One day we're going to be with Him and we won't have to worry anymore. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. A chapter uh, back chapter 4, verses 14 through 18, he says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. <coughs> to which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are not or for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know, this light affliction. Uh, at, at, at this moment in time when we're going through the affliction, uh, it, sometimes it doesn't seem like a light affliction, does it? Yeah. When we're going through those trials and tribulations, they don't seem like they're just menial things. They seem like they're weighty things. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem like they're real heavy burdens to bear. But when we think about how uh, 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 short of a time that we have on this earth uh, compared to eternity, uh, in which we are going to be with the Lord forever and forever. I mean, when you when you grasp that, uh, it is just a light affliction. Mm -hmm. It is just for a moment uh, that He says, and just that time that we have on this earth and the problems and trials we have through are going to work for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. In other words. Uh, the glory that we're going to share in heaven are, is going to be way far more uh, better uh, and outweigh the problems we ever had in this life. Amen. It's like a woman that gives birth. Uh, during the process of birth, uh, the pain is severe. But once she has given birth and they, she sees her child, that just goes out the window, right? When they lay that child upon her chest and she looks into its eyes and strokes its brow, you know, all the pain she went through in that birth is just, it, it, she 
don't even think about it anymore. And even, even uh, you know, later on, she's wanting to have more children, not thinking about that pain she went through, because she sees the glory that uh, that came after, and that precious life that was given. And so, uh, you know, the things that we go through at the time seem unbearable at times. But you know what? It's going to be uh, the, the glory we were going to share is going to outweigh those things where it's going to seem as nothing when we come face to face with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 58, it says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same. That is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's never in vain to trust in God. Amen? It's never in vain to trust His Word. Because going through the problems and the things that we go through, His Word is what keeps us. Amen? It's what preserves us and allows us to make it through those uh, times of trials without fainting, without giving up. And uh, allows us to be steadfast. He says uh, that when this uh, mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. Aren't you glad that it's written? Amen. Aren't you glad that God gave us his promises written to us that we might have them and know them? That promise that death is one day going to be swallowed, swallowed up in victory. Amen. That promise that we have that one day uh, death is going to lose and life is going to win. Amen. And I'm glad we have the promises of God and that it is written that we might know those promises and that we might have hope because that hope is, is what gets us through the times of tribulation and trials. Amen. He says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Amen. We need a hope in his word. Do we faint for his salvation? Yes. We faint for that day to come. Uh, just as we read, our, 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 uh, this earthly tabernacle groans. Amen. It groans to be redeemed by our Savior. But until that day, we have the word, the written word of God, that we might have hope. And that we might understand that what we're going through is going to seem like a light affliction one day. It's just going to seem like something light, a light burden that we had to go through because of the glory that we're going to share. He says back in uh, Psalms 119,
persecution in, in Revelation it says that the, the souls of uh, the souls of those people who were killed for their testimony through, uh, even through the tribulation they're going to be under that altar before God and they're going to pray how long Lord how long before you avenge us and he says until you know uh, what's going to happen is it happens that needs to happen until everything is accomplished and God knows when that time is amen God knows when that time is going to be that everything is accomplished and I have my beliefs on it I believe God sees when that last person is saved is going to be saved the end is going to come and there's going to be some some hard times uh, before we see the sign of the Son of Man coming. We know the, the what it says in Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 21. And, and uh, the, then the, the, the sun's going to be darkened, the moon's going to turn to blood, and the stars are going to be shaken, and all that are going to say. And then you're going to see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the, the cloud of glory. But you know what? It doesn't matter when it's going to happen. We believe because of the Word of God that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the days that we have on this earth. We don't know the length of days that we have. But we know that we can trust God's word. Amen. He says, How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? And you know what? That might be a question that those who are going through that uh, affliction might ask. Lord, how long are, are you going to let this go on? How long are you going to let this go on? Well, uh, look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And verses 13 through 17. It says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor, that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You see, we don't know how long we have. But we know this, that our life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We don't have long on this earth. And we need not to boast in tomorrow, but we need to boast in God. We need to have our boast in the Lord, because though we not Though we know not what shall be on the morrow, we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. And we know who holds us. That we are in the hand of God because of His Son, Jesus Christ. And so we need to know this, that if we have today, it needs to be spent serving Him. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We need to put God first in everything that we do, and then we don't have to worry about those things. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3. And I've heard this question before, not from anyone here, but just from other from people out in the world who say, Well, why does God let these things happen? Why doesn't God just come back and stop it right now and end it? Well, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? 
looking for and hasting unto you the coming of, of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So is God slack concerning his promise to come and, and, and to judge the world in righteousness? Uh, to uh, come and, 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 and save us and, and bring us out of all this mess? No, he's not slack. But he is long-suffering. And all this stuff is happening and going on. And I, I think I said this Sunday, you know, some people say, well, those people over there are evil, and, and man, why doesn't God just wipe them out? Well, maybe those people over there are going to have some children that maybe those children God knows is going to come to him and be saved. Mm -hmm. And so he allows them to, to live and to be who they are so that that child might be born and that God knows is going to come to him one day. We don't know those things, amen? We're not God. We can't see uh, who is going to accept Christ and who's not going to accept Christ. But this one we thing we know is that one day it's all going to be over, and then it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late for the, them, and it's going to be too late for us. If we want to serve God, we better do it while we have today, amen? amen. Just as he said, seeing that then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What should be our focus? What should be our desire? What should be our purpose that we have while we're here? Because one day when it's over, we can't go back and change anything. We need to do what we can do and what, God, what we know we ought to do. Just as it said to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Don't put off what you know to do good just because you think God prolongs his coming. Don't put off those things and be at, as that wicked servant who says in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and then begins to eat and be drunken with the drunken and, and beat the, the men servants and the maid servants. Because that servant was judged. When he came back. Okay? So we need to do what we know is good today. Amen. We don't have what's promised tomorrow. If we have tomorrow and wake up tomorrow, then praise the Lord. Let's give tomorrow to God. Let's give every day that we have to God. And do good as we know and have, have, have time. For our life is a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. Look at Psalms 112. Psalms 112, verses 6 through 10, it says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. Until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Amen. So we see, as we read over in Corinthians, that we don't look to those things that are temporal. Amen. But to those things which are not seen, which are eternal. And that it is doing the will of the Lord. Amen. That is going to abide forever. It is those who do the will of God that will abide forever. And our heart needs to be fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Our heart needs to be established. That we are not afraid. Amen. Of what man can do. What our enemies might do to us. Because we know that we are in the hands of God. And those who oppose God and His Son, Jesus Christ, they are going to be dealt with one day. And it says, He hath dispersed, He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. We need to be serving the Lord, amen, every day that we have. Because that's what's going to count in eternity. Back in Psalms 119, in our text, in closing, he says in the last, uh, in, in last verse of our text, in verse 88, it says, Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep thy, the testimony of thy mouth. You know, we need help to do that, don't we? <laughs> because this flesh is weak. Just as Jesus 
told the disciples that he had with him, asked them to pray while he went into the garden. And when he came back, they were asleep. And he woke them up and he said, you couldn't pray with me just for an hour? I mean, come on, guys. He said, what? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. This flesh doesn't want to serve God. This flesh wants to get in the way and keep us from serving the Lord. And so we need to be quickened, amen? We need the word of God to give us strength, to revive us again as we sing. Revive us again. Fill our heart with the, his love. The word of God is going to empower us to be able to serve him and to keep his commandments. He says, quicken me after thy loving kindness. Fill me with life. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. I tell you what, the power of the Holy Spirit will keep us uh, fighting the good fight of faith and not to where we faint and fall away. And the way we're going to stay in the Spirit is by keeping ourselves in the Word of God. Amen. Look at John chapter 6. John 6, 63. I believe Brother Sean read this Sunday night. John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is the Spirit that makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see, this flesh profits nothing. It's going to be done away with, just like everything else in this world. When we are resurrected, if we if we die before the coming of the Lord, or if we're here and we're raised up together with them, guess what? This flesh is going to be changed. It's going to be done away with. And we're going to be given our new bodies. So this flesh profits nothing. There's nothing to profit in the flesh. It's all going to burn with fervent heat. It's all going to be melted. It's all going to be done away with. But it is the spirit that quickeneth. And he says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If we are going to be strong in the spirit, we may need to be strong in his word. And then we will be able to live for him. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 deals with the, uh, the tribulation and all those things leading up to the tribulation and things after the tribulation. Uh, the parables given about uh, that time. Matthew chapter 24 verses 35 through 39 he says in verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, for uh, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, they, they weren't thinking about God. They weren't thinking about what God wanted from them. They weren't thinking what God's will for their life was. What God expected from them. All they were thinking about were the fleshly things. Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, having parties, having a good time, just living, which is what the world is thinking about now. And you know what? What's sad is a lot of Christians, that's all they think about too. Most of the time, maybe not all the time, but most of the time, that's what, what even Christians think about. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away. Marriage and everything in it, you know, I'm sorry if, if you were counting on being married in heaven. There is no marriage in heaven, okay? Jesus said we're going to be as the angels which are not given. That's going to be one of those things that we don't even care about when we get there, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I mean, we have a 
small inkling, but the greatness and the glory that we are going to have when we're there. All the things of this earth, we won't want, amen, because we'll have what, what we've been looking for and what God has promised to us. So let us not get caught up in the things of this world while we're here, because we are just pilgrims. We are just strangers and sojourners here. Let us keep our eyes on the prize, amen, the prize of the high calling of God toward that mark so that we can keep ourselves in the faith and not lose faith and, and become like the world. Then one more verse of scripture in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 through 17 he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Amen. Love not the world. That doesn't mean that we can't enjoy some of the things in the world. God has given us this life to enjoy it while we're here. But to love the world is to have our affection set on these things and not on God. Because you can't serve two masters. It can't happen. Either your affections are going to be on those things above or your affection is going to be on those things here below. You can't have them both. That's why Joshua said, choose you this day. You can't serve them both. He's saying you can't serve God and man. You need to choose today. While you have today. Amen. And we need to choose every day. Not to keep our affections on the things of the earth. What God gives us to enjoy, praise the Lord for. Amen. Amen. But that's where our affections should be. Not on the things that God gives us to enjoy, but on Him who has given us those things. To, to thank God. God. All good gifts come from the Father of lights. Amen. 